So oftentimes when you've completed a few analyses, you have multiple stories that have similar insights and are ultimately trustable. The question then becomes, which one do you deploy to your users? If all the stories are similarly coherent, what you can use at this point is the fit statistics of the model. To access them, there's a drop-down menu at the top right, and you can look at model metrics. The first chart you're presented with is a cumulative capture rate chart. What this chart plots is the percentile of the data and what percentage of your wins are captured by that percentile. So you can see here by the 10th percentile, or the first decile, if we come up to the blue line, you can see that we capture 25% of our wins in the top decile of the model. If you're familiar with lift terminology, you do the division here, 0.25 divided by 0.1, and you get a lift of 2.5. Practical interpretation of that would mean an opportunity that scores in the top decile is 2.5 times more likely to win than one chosen at random. This chart also demonstrates that you can get almost 80% of all of your wins focusing on the top 60% of your opportunities. You can see here, cumulative capture rate of 0.79 by the 0.6 data fraction. That means if we were to focus only on 60% of our opportunities, we get almost 80% of all of our wins. This is a metric for how well the model attributes higher scores to one opportunities. A simple metric to evaluate how well the model does that is the Gini coefficient, which is shown here. The Gini coefficient compares how well this model does to how well a theoretically best possible model does in relation to not using a model at all. So the green line is not using a model at all. The theoretically best possible model would move all of the wins up to the top scores and then level off. And the Gini coefficient measures how close this blue line gets to that theoretically best possible model. This number is bound between zero and one, so it works as a good representation for comparing models. If you go to the scoring metrics tab, we show a lot more information. If you're interested in learning what F1, F2, and F0.5 are, there are great Wikipedia articles for these, but all of these are basically weighted averages of precision and recall. For the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on accuracy, precision, and recall in this tab. You can see that each of these metrics has two values. It has a maximum value and a threshold for the maximum value. To talk about what these are doing, I'm going to use it in Excel spreadsheet. So this data is similar to that which we used to build the model, and I scored it using our prediction model. From the numeric prediction, I'm able to predict which class each of these opportunities falls into. For accuracy, Einstein Discovery says that if I set a threshold of 0.56, I'll be accurate about 74% of the time. What that means is if I score records that score above 0.56 as true and below 0.56 as false, I will be accurate 74% of the time. This is called a confusion matrix. It tracks what my prediction was, true or false, and what the actual value of the record was, true or false. If the prediction matches what actually happened, then I'm correct, and if it doesn't, I'm wrong. And you can see here, the accuracy, as stated, is about 74%. It's the most simple of the metrics to look at. However, not all use cases call for this kind of metric. Suppose, for example, that we're selling a very expensive product, and we're going to put a lot of money marketing to specific people. So if we have a customer that we want to court, we're going to spend thousands of dollars taking them out to dinner and sending them materials and giving them tours of our facilities to try to get them to buy our product. In that case, we only want to market to the people that are really, really likely to buy our product because we don't want to waste money marketing to the people that aren't likely to buy it. So in that case, we want to be very, very precise about who we market to. That's where precision comes in. Precision says if we set a very high threshold, in this case about 95%, I'll be right about 99% of the time. So if you look at that metric, you can see I've set a very high precision. Only five of my records are classified as true or predicted to be true. But of those five, four of them actually were true. I lost out on a lot of trues, but the nice thing is I didn't market to a lot of customers that weren't going to buy. I only marketed to five customers and I was right the vast majority of the time. That's what precision gives you. But if you were to go to your sales reps and say, hey, only work these five opportunities because you're not likely to win the rest, your sales rep is probably going to say, hey, that's my livelihood. I, I make commission here. I need to work more opportunities. So that's where recall comes in. Recall says set a really low threshold because if they're really unlikely to buy the product, you shouldn't be working those opportunities anyway. So with recall, we set the low threshold. And you can see, yeah, we worked a lot of opportunities that didn't win, but we got nearly all of our wins. So this is an efficiency play. I was able to get 99.98% of all of my wins, and I didn't even have to work all of my opportunities to do it. You're able to chop off those, those guaranteed losers, and you won't have to worry about it. So that's the scoring metrics tab. 
We also provide a cross-validation metrics tab, which provides lots of other information. Of note in this tab is AUC. AUC, similar to Gini, is bounded between 0 and 1, and higher values tell you that you're moving more true predictions into the higher scores of the model. So armed with all of these, you're able to look at two different Einstein discovery analyses and determine which one actually provides better predictions. In this case, I'll use Gini. For this model that I ran with the additional fields after removing the multicollinearity, I get a Gini of 0 0.450. If I go to my original analysis before I appended those additional fields, and I look at the model metrics for that one, I see a Gini of 0 0.451. So even though I added additional fields and I removed multicollinearity, the model that I built last is actually not better than the first model that I built. This would tell me to deploy the first model. For linear regression, the fit statistics are even easier. If we go to our retail sales example and look at model metrics, you see we give a lot of information here. But of note, our R squared, which I've already covered, MAE, which is mean absolute error, which you want to be small. It's the absolute value of your errors on average. And RMSE, which I covered in an earlier video. You also want this to be small. So you can compare R squared, MAE, and RMSE to figure out which linear regression model actually provides the best predictions. One final note about choosing a model to deploy. With the current status of Einstein discovery right back, the fields that you use for predictions have to be within Salesforce. So if you recall in our last Einstein Discovery Opportunities analysis, the original data set came from Salesforce, but we appended those additional fields from outside of Salesforce. Those could have come from just about anywhere. If you wanted to use writeback with those additional fields, you would have to implement a process to bring those additional fields into Salesforce. And your mileage may vary with how quickly you can do that. If the fields are already in Salesforce, you could deploy the model pretty much today after you go through the appropriate internal processes. But if you have to bring in fields from additional sources, that can take a long time. So keep that in mind when you're trying to decide which Einstein discovery story to deploy. As I mentioned earlier, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. If you can deploy a model today that's good, and then append fields later on that can make it better, that's probably a better way to go than waiting forever to bring in those fields in the first place. This concludes our training of Einstein discovery, but make sure to check out the other videos in this playlist for all the other Einstein Analytics products.